So let us start uh, with problem number one, okay? So we will uh, do it for around 15 minutes. So we have a simple mechanism in this problem. What we have is, this is a device which is used to supposedly trim various things. So this is where, uh, this is the blade, this vertical portion. This is a frictionless guide. In this problem, it's frictionless. And what we are asked to do is that this knife is connected by a two force member DB to this, uh, uh, to this full member ABC and what we do is that if you apply a force here then that force get uh, transmitted here and in the end at point E the force gets uh, transmitted to the plate which then gets sheared. So what we are asked in this question is that for this very simple system we are asked to find out what is the vertical component of force exerted by the blade at D. Okay? So what is the vertical force here and because there is no friction between these two rigid supports this vertical force automatically imply what is the shearing force. And second, we want what are the reactions at C. Okay, is the problem clear? Okay, so let us solve this problem. Okay. Okay, so TS will be here. But what is the logic? Okay, for example, what we had done in the yesterday's class is we ask ourselves a question. If you want to know what is the force in member DB. The simple question we ask is what if we remove db? So we know if we remove db then whatever force you apply here, okay, there is nothing balanced about C. So what we know is that this db is providing a counterbalance for this force about point C. So immediately we know that the thing we want to do is take this free body diagram and take moment about point C in order to find out what is the force in this two force member. We know what is the orientation of this member, why because we know these two distances. So we know what is angle. So the moment we know this angle, we immediately know if the force in db is given, vertical and horizontal force is immediately obtained. Okay, so I think I forgot type p. Let me. P is not unknown. P is p is missing. Let me tell you what p is. But even then, you can obtain the answer in terms of p. But let me quickly tell what the value of p is. Okay, get the answer in terms of p, and then report what the value is. B is not a, it's a, it's a hinge between D and B, but member ABC is a full rigid body. ABC, ABC is a rigid body okay. and, and it is connected by a pin joint to member DB at point B. At point B. Point B. Point B, pin. B, B. Okay. Yeah. Right, so ABC is a whole rigid body. It is pinned about point B with respect to member DB. So member DB is a two force member, member ABC is not. Okay, so load is equal to 400. Okay, load is 400. So use the load as 400 and tell what the answer is. 26. Yeah, it looks fine. D D Y right? 2675. Huh? 2534 newtons. So like between those, like approximately similar value, but not exactly. Load is P is 400. Okay, please take P is equal to 400. I'm sorry. Answer 2.7 kilonewton for dy. 285, yeah, 2.8 kilonewton, 2.8 kilonewton, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is vertical reaction at D. Yeah, 2.86. 2.86 is the vertical reaction at D. Good. Two force members. I have called that as a RDB. RDB member comes 3.076 Newton. Okay, maybe, but we are asked. So you vertical, that then? Yeah, but what is the vertical reaction? Because that is the uh, that is what is asked in the question and it has miraculously disappeared. You may be right, but what I want is what is the vertical reaction at D? That is what the problem demands. Okay, and vertical reaction at D. Your like, force in member DB is fine. Okay, so. Uh, do you think uh, I can just uh, just briefly show the show the solution and we move on? Okay, so let me just quickly show the solution and we can move on. Yes, please. Huh. Then uh, I got answer two point eighty three. Eight three eight six. Okay, it just that's fine. Two point eight. Yeah, depend on how where did you truncate the decimal places. 
is fine. 2.8 kN approximately is the right answer. Okay, so just simple, okay, very straightforward problem. We begin with a simple problem. We will move on to a little bit more difficult problems. So this is the entire free body diagram. We have replaced the force in member DB, okay, along the, because DB is a two force member, this is a line of action of the member. Take moment about point C, okay, for the entire free body diagram. You will get an equation like this. Note one thing that the inclination is such that dy by dx, okay, is equal to 60 divided by 25. The dy by dx is equal to 60 divided by 25. And when we say that this is the direction of the force which is provided by member db, we are assuming implicitly that db may there is a compression. Okay, there is a compression in db is what we are implicitly assuming. So it will push the other member. Okay, we solve this. Okay, because we are interested in dy, what we can do is that while taking the torque of member d uh, of horizontal force dx about point c, we just replace dx in terms of dy here. And we solve this equation, we get dy. Then what we do simply that for this complete free body diagram ABC, take equilibrium of the force in the horizontal direction. We can immediately then find out what is FCX, reaction at point C in the horizontal direction. Similarly, taking equilibrium in the Y direction, okay, we can immediately find out what is the vertical reaction okay, at point C. The total effective reaction is sigma FX square plus F Y square. And the angle will be just tan inverse of FCY by FCX, okay, because both are negative, means we have taken the direction FCX to be upwards, sorry, FCY to be upwards, FCX to be in the horizontal direction, okay, and both come out to be negative, which means that the directions that we had assumed are exactly opposite. So FCY is downwards, FCX is to the left, and so the effective angle will be 68.5 in this direction for the force. Any doubts? Can we move on to the next problem? So what we have is the same kind of a plier, what we are asked to find out that what is the clamping force Q in terms of the parameters, what are the parameters in this system? The parameters in this system are C, E, alpha, B, A. So there are four dimensions of the system and for this system, okay, and there is an angle alpha. So for these dimensions, what we are asked to find out is given, given this P, what is the clamping force produced at the clamping points, Q? Question straightforward, just two lines question, okay. So let us solve this problem, okay, using the symmetry arguments which we had done yesterday. Little bit difficult problem, not too difficult. Which one is alpha? Okay, so let me mention that properly here. What is alpha is if you look here, focus on these two pins, these two. If you take a line joining the centers of these two, it is not perfectly vertical. It makes an angle alpha with respect to the vertical. Okay, so that line is at some inclination. And you see because of that, that angle is also reflected like this because this dotted dashed line is perpendicular to this. So that also becomes alpha. Okay, is the geometry clear what alpha is? Yeah, so let us solve this problem. Any question? Okay, so you can ask me. Just note one thing is that even though the geometry looks all curved bars and so on, if you can just replace that with straight lines, okay, that will really simplify the problem because all the intricate details of the geometry, handles being curved and everything is completely irrelevant to the problem. If you replace it with a nice straight lines problem, it will become very straightforward. And use little bit of symmetry arguments, not much of what we did yesterday. This is even simpler than what we did yesterday. In this problem, okay, a simple hint is that uh, a simple hint is that take this line, this horizontal line is actually the line of symmetry in the sense that you take the plier and turn it around about this axis, you will see exactly the same thing, right? So what does that mean that at this point of intersection, two of these bodies are meeting, okay? This top, top handle and the bottom handle, they are intersecting at this center point, let us call it O and in that case, because of Newton's law, as we saw yesterday, the reactions will be equal and opposite, but by the symmetry in the problem about this axis, they should also be equal and mirror images of each other. So that will dictate as yesterday that the horizontal force, okay, when you remove those two will be zero. You will see that and that is the only symmetry you need to use in this problem. Why? 
because then you can just disassemble this portion, disassemble the top portion and we know from symmetry that the horizontal reaction here is 0. Same goes for this one that this pin is common to the top jaw and the bottom jaw. Okay? So, by Newton's third law when you disassemble these two the reactions from one to the other should be equal and opposite and it is a pin joint. Okay? So, these two degrees of freedom are restricted, rotation is free. So, there will be vertical reaction, there is horizontal reaction, Newton's third law will dictate that they will be equal and opposite, but the mirror symmetry about this axis will dictate that they are mirror images of each other and if you just draw those arrows, you will immediately see that even at this point, the horizontal reaction is 0. And then you are left with two very simple problems, you have to analyze this jaw, sorry, this handle and this jaw. Okay? And you will immediately realize that what is this handle doing? This handle is trying to, uh, uh, after applying these two forces P, these two handles tend to rotate about these two points, both the bottom one and the top one. Okay? So, we know that somehow the torque about this point has to be involved for this free body diagram. Similarly, what about the jaw? Even in the jaw, you can see that the, the jaw tends to rotate about this point. When we do principle of virtual work, we will solve this exact problem using principle of virtual work and you can actually visualize what the displacements are. But here, in very hand waving or qualitative terms, you will see that the top jaw and the bottom jaw tend to rotate about this point. So, the immediate equation that would come to your mind is for this free body diagram torque about this point. Okay? So, that is the overall idea and by symmetry, what did we achieve? We made sure that for the top free body diagram, at this point of intersection, there is no horizontal reaction. For the jaw, the top jaw, if you draw the free body diagram, then at the point of intersection, there is no horizontal reaction. And we simplified the problem, we got rid of two unknowns immediately okay, by using symmetry arguments. You do not need to use symmetry argument, but then you will end up solving the complete all four free body diagrams. And that is not desirable if you can use the symmetry in the problem, simpli simplify the problem, why not? Okay? So, that is the idea. Okay? So, if you can work on it for another 5 minutes, okay? now with this uh, extra piece of information, if you have not already used it. Okay? Okay, so, what is A? Okay, maybe I, uh, this line we saw is the line joining the centers of these two. Okay? Now, what you do is that you draw this line, this line is parallel to this line. So, these two lines are parallel to each other. Okay? And where these two lines intersect, like at this point, okay, so this angle is also alpha. The angle that P makes with this line here is also alpha. Okay? And from that point, okay, this distance is A. So, for example, I can say that P cos alpha into A is the torque of produced by this force P about this inch. Okay? This angle here is also alpha. So, P cos alpha into A is the torque for this free body diagram okay, of this force about this because the other component will just pass through this. So, that is the reason that for example, if this entire curved assembly, if we reduce it into just straight lines, then the problem will be greatly simplified because all those details are extraneous. Like, sir, I have a doubt. Yes. When we apply the load, huh. we have two hinges in the line of symmetry. Two hinges in line of symmetry, but we… Uh, the yes. distance between that reduce when we apply the load? No, no, no. See this right now. We are not looking at the mechanism. So, for example, if there were no, no material to clamp, then you apply the load, of course, the distance will change. But in this configuration, when you are about to apply load, okay, and the presence of the material between the clamps is keeping the system in equilibrium. Okay? So, if we have put some rigid planks okay, or whatever, some material at the clamps, so the system currently is in equilibrium in that configuration. And what we want to know is that in that configuration, okay, what is the force that is acting at the clamp given the force that handles it? Diagram of any of that yes. component, we still have a horizontal component at the hinge. At which hinge? The symmetric hinge, the uh, hinge on the line of symmetry. It, there can be horizontal component if you disassemble those two, okay? But the only thing is that by symmetry, what is symmetry that you take this here, you rotate about the center line, okay? It will look the same. So just think about it, you just flip it you will exactly get the same figure. So, there is a symmetry about the center line joining the two center hinges. And that symmetry ensures that there is no horizontal reaction okay, that will act at those two, uh, both, both connection points. And now on watch free body diagram, both top free body diagram and the bottom free body diagram.
can you see this okay so what we have done is we have just made a simple caricature this is the center point okay so let me get back to this this point is this this center point is this okay so all the extraneous details we got rid of and what we did is that that this entire uh, handle we can just replace it by a nice straight of uh, pair of straight lines so this is one line okay this is the, this particular line eb okay this line eb is just this line joining the center of this and the center of this okay i will pose this okay you can use these figures if you wish to so this is eb and from the dimensions given in this figure what we have seen is that that this line okay is perpendicular to eb similarly for the top figure also this line will be perpendicular to eb so this distance is a this is a right angle now from symmetry we saw that there is only vertical force no horizontal force can everybody see this figure is it clear okay no horizontal force so there is only one vertical force at point b there is a possibility of having two forces okay there is a possibility of getting two forces but for this free body diagram if you take sigma fx equal to 0 you immediately see that fbx has to be 0 and then for this free body diagram if you take moment about point e to be equal to 0 okay then you immediately get what is the value but what is the moment about point a so it will be p a cos alpha okay because we want this horizontal distance which is a cos alpha so p a cos alpha will give you distance horizontal distance between this point and b minus b sin alpha will essentially give you that what is the horizontal distance of the line of action of p from e okay so p a cos alpha minus b sin alpha okay should be equal to f b y times b sin alpha so that is the equation you can immediately find out what is f b y now come to this free body diagram what we know is that that what is happening is the clamping force okay is trying to rotate this free body diagram the jaw about point c and if you then immediately see that if you take torque about point c to be equal to 0 or the moment balance about point c similarly since b f b x is 0 this goes away so f b y into e this is e is equal to clamping force into c so you just use these two equations and you will immediately see that q will be given by p e by c a by b cot alpha minus 1 okay which i think very close some answer got, some people got it because we are doing this problem in a hurry i'm sure that if you do it at some leisure then you will exactly get this answer okay it's it's okay because there are so many distances and we are doing it in a hurry okay you do it at leisure okay everything will work out fine is the overall idea clear to most of you ha huh. values of q is equal to p or less than or greater than become it will have to be more than p more than yes because it's a machine so the advantage yeah. is that why are we doing this why don't we i just go there and hold it like this we don't want to just hold it our hands because too much load okay. is required whereas with a machine a tiny load here yeah you can curve because a is very large a is very okay okay a is very large yeah okay so what you can say that is a is extremely large you can throw away that one okay 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 and then a will essentially win over everything take some extreme limit so that's a mechanical advantage you have otherwise i can just go and hold it like this right but that's too much force so there is one thing that i can tell immediately is this the solution looks like this e by a a by b okay so what you can see here is that that you can have double advantage is what i can tell you that a by b is a number which is more than 1 e by c also if you ensure is a number more than 1 then you are getting more advantage than just having one plus okay that less is, force will be applied so for less force because we are multiplying two numbers which are more than 1 okay Thank so you. that may be one of the reasons okay but again that's a speculation because if you look here there are two ratios involved e by c okay and there is a by b okay and alpha if you keep to be very small then just note that cot alpha will be very large when alpha is very small so you are getting a significant amount of advantage okay mechanical advantage with this one because when alpha becomes small okay cot alpha becomes large because when tan, tan alpha becomes close to pi by 2 tan becomes very large 
cot is just inverse of alpha. So when tan is small, cot is large. So it's a huge advantage that we get here. E by C greater than 1, A by B greater than 1, cot alpha very large. One you can almost forget actually. Okay, so one would be very negligible compared to A by B cot alpha. Actually, there are numbers for this problem. Okay, so this is, I got it in symbols because it's very easy to display the solution. Because numbers, what happens is that, like you do something, you may do two mistakes and you get some number which is very close to the actual value. But symbols, you cannot lie with the symbols. Numbers, you can always fudge. Is the idea clear? But there is significant amount of mechanical advantage that is coming in this one. Can we move on to the next problem before we start the quiz? This is from the older version of Beer and Johnston. Okay, so if you get hold on older version of Beer and Johnston, it has some really interesting problems. Okay, so what we have here is an assembly. So, like in many problems which we had done yesterday, we have a rigid post which is nicely bolted. So, for all practical purposes, we can take it to be a rigid body, nothing to do with no free world diagram that is involved. But what is happening here is that, that we have a hoisting mechanism to hoist this truss. Now, all these details of the truss are extraneous, we do not really need them. How are we hoisting it? We have two parallel members A, B, C, D, E, F. We pin this member D, E, uh, F at point F to the truss. We pin A, B, C to point C, okay, to the truss. And for simplicity, what the textbook tells us is you assume, okay, that the pin at C can only transmit horizontal force, no vertical force. This is only to make the structure statically determinate. That at C, there is no vertical reaction, even though it is represented as a pin. Okay? But what I am telling you is that if you think about it, that restriction is not required, but it simplifies the problem. Okay? That at point C, okay, even though it, it is a pin, okay, only horizontal reaction, no vertical reaction can be transmitted. It is written in the statement of the problem. Now, this assembly, what are we doing? is for this assembly, we are hoisting it using this hydraulic cylinder, which is attached to this main portion at point H. Now, how are we raising or lowering? Look in this position, if you increase the length of this arm, this parallelogram can deform, go up and the assembly will go up. If you reduce the length of this arm, then the parallelogram which is like this will come back and the entire assembly can be lowered. This 5 kilo Newton Okay, is the weight that we are lowering or raising. And what we are asked that for this particular configuration, okay, so for example, what I have seen is that, that uh, uh, some of you are asking that the system will move. So what I have to tell you again is that in this particular course, what we are interested is if you are quasi-statically lowering or raising or if you are holding this assembly in a particular position, then for that position, what are the forces? And what we are asked here is that, that given this, or this is the geometry of the problem, what is the force that is exerted by this hydraulic cylinder at point H? Okay, and all the dimensions are given to you. So there is one a naive way of solving this problem. There is an elegant way of solving this problem. Okay, so uh, why don't you have a go at it? Any questions you can ask me. Towards then I will flash the solution. Okay, what we are asked. Okay, just think about the problem. Is the hydraulic cylinder is attached to the main vertical wall or the main vertical? Uh, pillar at point H. So, what are the forces exerted by the hydraulic cylinder at point H? You can find out F H X and F H Y for simplicity and all the dimensions are given. It is a problem from old Beer and Johnston. Get, hand of that, uh, get that book if you have. It has many, many nice problems. The, old, the new one does not have that many good problems. Problem clear? Is there any, uh, uh, is there any issue with the problem statement? Only thing that you that is not clear from the figure is that at point C, which is at the top, even though it looks a pin joint, just for simplicity in the textbook it is given that point C can transmit only a horizontal force, no, no vertical force. But I assure you that even if that restriction is not there, you can still solve this problem. AB is, a, AB is not a two force member. Uh -huh. Again, see, ABC is a whole rigid member, AB is not a two force member. Similarly, DEF is a full member. but but BE, which is a vertical link, that is a two force member, and of course, the hydraulic cylinder is also a two force member. Strictly speaking, it is not because of the weight, but the weight is generally smaller as compared to the other quantities, other forces involved. No, HX is not 5. Uh, okay, 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 HY is how much? 5. 5. HY uh, is not 5. HX is 5. HY is 5. No. 
see see note one thing there's a consistency checks hx and hy if both are 5 then the inclination of that member should be 45 degrees which is clearly it is not so you know that hx and hy can't be both equal okay but the member in the middle portion is 12.5 that is fine and you have to also for example if you report that so two force member you should in principle also report its compressive or tensile but in this case it doesn't matter because that is not the final goal of this problem so the consistency check even without going into any details is that hx and xy should not have the same values because the angle is uh, tan inverse of 1.2 by 0.8 with respect to horizontal and not 45 so let me quickly go over okay because we are running out of time so the way so everybody can find out force in link b everybody can right or is there any doubt about finding force in link b yeah you can say something okay let me put it this way most of you can you not solve force in member b you can solve ah yeah yeah please please explain. okay let me do that okay so the way i can explain okay so let me just flash this thing here okay you can see that if you draw a free body diagram okay for the truss okay free body diagram for the top member what you will see is at point c according to the problem there is only horizontal force okay so let me go again here so point c there is only horizontal reaction point f there can be two reactions both vertical and horizontal then by drawing the free body diagram of this okay we can find out all these three forces fcx ffy ffx you agree with me okay you can find all the three forces find simple equilibrium you can take talk about uh, point f find out fcx equilibrium in the horizontal direction find fffx and p will be equal to f of fy straight up straight forward so all three are obtained now what we do okay is coming back to this problem again we know what are the reactions at point c and point f one horizontal reaction horizontal and vertical so we look at this member okay member ac if we look at member ac then what you see is that there is a internal member be what is that member doing if this member be were not present then what will happen is that this fcx will have nothing to balance its torque for member abc about point a right so from that as a few of you obtained you can obtain what is a member uh, force in member be note that we have taken the line of action from member be on to rod abc downwards so what we have implicitly assumed that member be is in tension okay member b is in tension it is downwards so we can solve for this and as few of you obtained that fbe will be in 12.5 kN in tension now what we do is look at the bottom member def now this fbe will act equal and opposite okay it's a tensile force it will act provide a pulling force at point b there is ffy ffx if this force were not present then there will be nothing to balance the moment for this free body diagram over point d from this okay but what is additional constraint that that we have here okay we have the additional constraint we have is that there is a hydraulic cylinder which is attached at point e so now how many unknowns do we have we have one unknown the direction of that unknown is known okay so we can have the horizontal and vertical components easily ffx ffy are known so for this free body diagram taking moment about point d we can immediately find out what is fhx and what is fhy okay and there is a even more elegant method to solve this problem okay i will quickly flash that and it is as follows what we do is this like using the trick which we used yesterday for the top truss okay for the top truss take your x and y axis which are not straight but which which are inclined so that the y axis is along uh, uh, so that the x axis is along the member abc the inclined direction and this is the y axis then what you do is that that for this top free body diagram take equilibrium in in this inclined direction okay you can immediately say that your f c y okay this is y plus f f y is equal to p cos theta immediately p can be replaced as p cos theta now 
for these two, we just have equal and opposite reactions by Newton's curl law. And you can take for this pivot diagram, moment about point A, you will get one equation like this. Second free body diagram, take moment about point D, you will again get an equation like this, both in terms of FBE, FCY, FFY. Now just add these two equations. What you will get is a simple equation of this form, FFY plus FCY, which is nothing but P cos theta into all the momentums will be equal to the force in the hydraulic cylinder. So in four steps, you can solve this problem, okay, and get the answer to that. Okay, just think about it, that instead of resolving the forces, in uh, x and y direction as horizontal, you keep your x and y axis which is tilted. How much is the tilt? The tilt is along the direction ABC, which is the same as the direction of DEF. Think about it, try it, okay? If you got it, it's great. If not, you can talk me afterwards or uh, uh, just think about it. It will come about. But what you will realize is that, that we can just write uh, three and four, four equations, equations and without solving anything, anything, we'll immediately get the answer and it will be extremely transparent answer because we immediately know a simple relation between the applied force, angle of this link, okay, angle of this link, applied force, and all the distances. Okay, very transparent answer will come, which will not be clear from the earlier procedure, which is simple, but a bit convoluted. So idea is that, that by, again, by choosing appropriate coordinate axis, you can really make the problem much simpler than it, all, uh, it was.